my topic that I've chosen, I think is very appropriate, very necessary for leaders today, men and women, uh, people who lead, whether it's in churches, in business, in family. I'm talking about the dark side of leadership. I'm talking about how with people, leaders, without character, uh, how they could do great damage to their family, their life, uh, or the, any organization that they attempt to lead. In the Word of God, the book of Philippians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul writes to a group of people, a church at Philippi. This is an Asia Minor, and he writes to this particular church, and he says these words. He says, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Here's a man, the Apostle Paul, who knew what it was like to struggle against moral problems and moral difficulties in his own life. He's the one that cried out, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Uh, he knew that the, the great battle that every man and every person faces with their indwelling corruption, indwelling heart. Yet he's lived the kind of life that he could say uh, to a group of people, people that he knew and loved and, and had ministered to, he says, the things you've learned from me, the things you've seen in my life, the things you've seen me do and heard me teach, do these things, he said, the God of peace will be with you. Uh, every leader should so live like that, that the things that we say in our daily conversation, in our quiet times, in our business talks, in, in our everyday uh, intercourse with people and chatting with people, in the way that we uh, spend our quiet, our, our family times, or our leisure times, our recreation times. We should so live a life that people can look at our lives, the things that they hear us say, see us do, that they're able to follow our example, and that we don't have to worry about, uh, oh, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have acted like that, I shouldn't have been this way. Live a transparent life. That's what Paul, the Apostle Paul says to these people at Philippi. The things that you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, the God of peace be with you. In recent days, uh, we've received news reports of fallen Christian leaders, pastors, evangelists, people in high organizations uh, that have fallen into some deep and terrible moral problem. It doesn't just happen with church leaders, it happens with leaders in government, uh, we've had reports of that as well. Uh, presidents and scandals and various things, people that are or, uh, heads of organizations. Uh, we hear of these things, read of them, and, and when we do, it breaks our heart. When we hear of these great moral failures that take place in the lives of so many people. These things are tragic. And the damage it does to a church, to a government, to a cause, to an organization is enormous. But as sad as these, these falls are, and as tragic as they are, I think equally heartbreaking is the way that many times people respond to those who have fallen into some moral issue or some moral failure. Uh, sometimes people, they won't forgive, or they scorn these people, they scoff at them, they reject their message, and any number of other uh, un, unkind and unworthy uh, responses are given when people fall into these types of, of problems. I want you to know something very carefully. All of you who aspire to be leaders, who need to develop character, and who need to work on your life, I want to, to share as I talk about the dark side of leadership here, I want to remind you something very carefully. The Lord of God in 1 Timothy 5, chapter 5, verse 24, the Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, a young man that he's discipling, he says unto him, Some men, their sins precede them to judgment, but others, that is other men, their sins follow them afterwards. But what does it mean by that? I want to remind you that for every leader of an organization, every government official, every pastor, every person who has been exposed as a hypocrite, who has fallen into some terrible moral problem, moral failure, for everyone that we see, for everyone that comes out, there are absolutely hundreds and hundreds of others secretly hidden away of men, women, professing leaders, 
hiding their sin, living in hypocrisy. So some men, they're, they're so openly scandalous when they die, we know, whether, we know where they're headed to judgment. We know their sins will follow them there. We know that they have a day of reckoning coming. But for many people that look on the outside, look fair and well and good, moral and upright, but we don't know what's behind the curtains. We don't know what's behind closed doors. We don't know what these people are really like in private. What is their thought life in private? What, what are they really like? And for many people, uh, when they die, we, we may think that they're wonderful people, but uh, for those who have hidden and cloaked away their sins, uh, their, fallen, their problems, their moral problems, those problems will follow them to judgment. I grieve when I hear of people that fall. I grieve when I hear of government officials that are caught in some scandal. I grieve when people embezzle money or people do terrible things. These things break my heart. And we should all, as, as people, when we see people fall and have problems, it should grieve us as well. Be careful about the temptation to criticize. Be careful about being too self-righteous and coming down on these people too hard. Sin needs to be judged and corrected and, and, and dealt with and so forth. But be cautious about what you say and how you respond when people fall or have moral problems. I want to remind you of a number of things. First of all, remember this. When you hear of some leader whether it be a man or woman, a pastor, a business leader, a government official, when you hear of somebody falling into some terrible scandal, remember this, but, but by the grace of God, there go I. Remember this, that every one of us, every person, every man, woman, everyone in leadership, every person struggles with their own inner life, their own moral, moral compass. We all have our besetting sins. That's why the Bible says, lay aside those sins that so easily beset you, Hebrews chapter 12 says. So be careful, be cautious about these sort of things when you hear of people falling into some moral scandal. I would plead with all of you that you should pray for those who have been exposed. Pray for those who have fallen. Now, we don't know what but terrible inner struggles they've had, what grief they've had, what guilt they face, uh, what battles they've struggled with. But I'm speaking today for all of you as leaders. I'm speaking of the dark side of leadership. Uh, every person who wants to be a leader must struggle to live a life of integrity and character. It's easy to talk about character. It's easy to talk about integrity. It's easy to, to say these things. It's a wholly different perspective to actually live it out. There are several dangers that we need to face when we talk about the dark side of leadership. There is first of all the danger of, uh, of our own moral life, the danger of our own fallen nature, the danger of the, of the temptations within us. That's the danger number one. Danger number two is living as a hypocrite. And danger number three is, is, is actually the danger of going through life and dying without ever dealing with the moral issues that you're facing in your life. I mean, consider, first of all, the danger of indwelling sin or the danger of a moral problem. Uh, whether you, you are a Christian or not, whether you believe in God or not, all people struggle with what's right and wrong. We all struggle to do the right thing. Given cer certain circumstances, given certain uh, temptations, we all battle with these moral issues. Where do these moral issues come from? How do we know what's right or what's wrong? How do we know what's good or what's evil? Well, th we have to have a moral absolute that teaches us these things. Uh, and that's what we have in the Word of God. The Bible gives us the law of God, which is our standard by which we judge all things. Put the Bible aside then if we don't have the moral authority of the Bible, then what do we base our, our justice on, our perspective of right and wrong, or good and evil? Well, without a moral absolute, it becomes the, the whim of the majority, or some elite person, some government official, to tell us what's right and wrong, and things can, can be uh, legal in one generation, illegal in another. Uh, we go back to the Scripture, and the moral law of God gives us a compass by which to evaluate all things. And in the Bible it tells us that every man and woman, 
in the world. They, they have an inner uh, nature, a fallen human nature that has a propensity to do that which is evil or corrupt. And as a people, we all face temptations. The Bible tells us, however, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, there's no temptation that's taken you, but such is as common to man. But God is faithful, and he'll not allow you to be tempted above what you can uh, help or handle, and he'll make a way of escape for you. So every person faces temptation. And every leader, particularly leaders, are vulnerable to temptation. So when a leader falls and there's some scandal is exposed, before you judge those people too harshly, take heed to yourself. Because the Bible says, take heed lest, that, lest you who think you stand, you might also fall. The Word of God tells us that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, be sober, that means be alert, be, you know, be on top of things, be sober, be vigilant, be watchful, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, he's walking around seeking whom he may devour. Be very cautious, if you would, about how you live, because you have a, a spiritual enemy who's going to lay traps for you, who's going to try to seduce you. He's going to try to tempt you and to draw you away from that which is good and morally right and pure. So be careful. We all face these kinds of things. Uh, even the Apostle Paul, even Paul knew what it was like to be tempted. And he said on one occasion, the good things I want to do, I don't do. The evil things that I, I don't want to do, these are the things that I do. I, I'm in a straight, I'm in a, I'm, I'm in a, in a bind, I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm pulled both ways. I want to do good, I don't do good as much as I want. I, I don't want to do evil, but I go that way. He says, oh wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? It's Romans chapter 7 where Paul is candid, comes clean, tells us that he, the Apostle Paul, had inner struggles with his moral life. But I remind you of the danger of, of indwelling sin. Nobody who, who lives in sin and dies in sin is going to go to heaven. Uh, I want to read a, a verse to you that's very, very important. In the book of Revelation, the Lord Jesus is speaking to John on the Isle of Patmos, and Jesus says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But, but, the cowardly, but the unbelieving, the abominable, but the but murderers, but sexually immoral people, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which is the second death. Jesus made it very clear that people who, who violate the laws of God, who live with moral corruption in their life, they are not going to heaven. Are you a liar? Do you habitually lie? Well, you just lie every now and then. You have little white lies. Jesus said no liar is going to go to heaven. Are you an adulterer? Are you immoral? Yeah, there are secret sins in your life that you haven't dealt with. Jesus said no adulterer is going to go to heaven unless they're forgiven. Mind you this, in the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord Jesus said, If any man looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, he says he has already committed adultery. Watch what you do in private. Watch what you watch in private. Watch how you use your mind in private. Because those who don't control their thought life are committing adultery in their minds if they're watching pornography or lusting after women. And Jesus said, no adulterer is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And there's the danger, the great danger of, of actually falling into sin and being judged as a person who has not dealt with their moral failures. One final caution about the danger of, of our moral life, our moral compass, and that says before you criticize someone else, before you point your finger and point out all the faults and the flaws of somebody else and come down on them so hard, remember what Jesus said, take the log, the big beam, take it out of your eye before you go after the little speck in your neighbor's eye. So there's the danger of our 
indwelling corruption, our, our moral nature that has a tendency to, to be evil. Deal with your moral problems. Deal with your besetting sins. Deal with those issues that are hindering you from being a good husband, a good wife, a good parent, a good leader, and so forth. Secondly, there's the danger of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is a terrible sin. As a matter of fact, our Lord Jesus had his harshest words to share about those who are hypocrites. I suppose, in some sense, we are all hypocrites in a measure. We all protect our reputation. Uh, we don't want anyone to, to, to touch our reputations. Should anybody criticize us, even in the slightest little way, if it hurts our reputation, we are really to, to, to bare our teeth, to clench our fists, and to go at them. Uh, we shouldn't be so defensive. We should be humble and transparent and open to criticism and even be willing to acknowledge, yes, I'm not perfect. I, I need God's grace, and I need the blood of Christ to forgive me. Uh, we should be very cautious about that. Uh, I think all of us are very sensitive to the kind of criticism that touches on it, comes close to home. I also think that many people profess more than what they really live. I think that's true of everyone. Uh, I think that we all have the, the, the danger of sometimes uh, professing more than what our testimony really lives up to. When people come to me and they say flattering things and talk about how good I am or this or that, I always remind myself not to read the newspaper clippings and not to read the, the praise of man because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is not what you say about me or what someone else says about me. It's not what others say about you. It's what God says about us. And that's what's most important. So be careful of the sin of hypocrisy. When people fall, we hear of some scandal, a government official, a church leader, a business leader, it should shock us. It should wake us up. We should realize that, boy, this is a terrible thing. And when people fall into these kinds of things, it should remind us that, that hypocrites are on the road to destruction. They're on the road to perdition. It's not too late for a hypocrite to change. It's not too late for a morally corrupt person to get right with the Lord. When my children were growing up, I came across a, a, a dramatic reading called The Ninety Men in the Marshall's Den. Uh, it's a true story written in poetic verse of a, many, many years ago out in the area around Dallas, Texas, back in the old days of the West. Uh, an old cowboy preacher went into a, a jail cell filled with 90 outlaws and bandits, uh, white men, uh, Indians, black men, they were there, and he was going to preach to them on, on a night. Brought with him a newspaper man, and the newspaper man came to help and pray and so forth. And the, the preacher had a, a lantern in one hand, and he had his Bible in the other, and he began to preach in this jail, and, and God came down. And 90 men in that jail cell, they, they, they heard the word of God, and they felt their conviction of sin, and they fell down, and they got right with the Lord. Uh, this newspaper man was so impressed, he wrote down in poetic verse what he saw and what he witnessed. And many years later, a pastor was going through some old dusty volumes in the uh, library in Dallas, Texas, and he came across that, that dramatic poem that that uh, newspaper man wrote. And he put it in the print, and it's been used by many people to remind us, to remind us, listen carefully, it's not too late. To get things right with the Lord. So that man wrote down these words. He said, it was, a, it was a stormy night, thunder booming, lightning was flashing. The preacher stood up and he said, I'm going to preach. And I'm going to teach to the 90 men in here of the words of love from the throne above. And his words rang out loud and clear. I'll preach for you of a Savior true and a happy home on high where the angels dwell where all are saved from hell, and where the righteous never die. Then he said a prayer in the prison there, as the ninety bowed their heads. He prayed for the chief and his unbelief, and the dark highwayman bold, for the bandits too, and the robber crew, and the criminals young and old. Then he sang a hymn in the prison grim. He sang, Turn, sinner, turn, it's not too late to reach God's gate ere the lamp 
holds out to burn. And then from his bed, from the black and the red, a broken outlaw too, with trembling steps to the parson he crept. And he shivered as all in the cold, and there was a bitter flash as the lightning's crash showed his features pale and stern. As that man bowed his head, he solemnly said, Dear God, dear God, I'm resolved to turn. And then the light came down like a silver crown, for the promise came to all. For the ninety men in the marshal's den heard only the Savior's call. And there was a bitter flash, and the lightning crashed, showed their features pale and stern. For they all bowed their heads, and they all solemnly said, Dear God, we're resolved to turn. It's not too late, friends. It's not too late to reach God's gate ere the lamp holds out to burn. The, the, the life of a hypocrite is a hard, painful, lonely life, and it leads to destruction. There's the danger of our indwelling moral corruption we need to deal with. There's the danger of living like a hypocrite as a leader. Finally, there's the danger of dying in such a state. Don't live in, in corruption. Don't live morally impure. Don't live like a hypocrite. Deal with your sinful habits. Deal with your, your problems, your temptations. And don't die without having settled these moral issues in your life. Expose your sin, repent of it, turn from it, and come to God and seek His grace and forgiveness. Seek out a pastor, seek out a friend, seek out somebody who can point you to, to, the, to the Lord and tell you the way of salvation and peace. Now let me say this as I close. Every leader, every person should have times, quiet times, where they stand back and they take an evaluation of their life. We, we do this in our business. We, we evaluate. We have a State of a Union address for the country. We evaluate our savings and our, our we look at our goals. We look at our records. We, we take stock of these things in your own life. Have those times where you sit back and evaluate and have a, a way of reviewing your soul, the state, the condition of your heart. And ask yourself, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? Uh, what do I need to work on? What do people see in me? Uh, what do people fear in me? What do people respect in me? Do I need to forgive anyone? Have I offended anyone that I need to make things right? I am I a trustworthy person? Do people trust me? Am I a good leader? Do people follow me? Do they enjoy my fellowship? My, do they respect my leadership? Uh, and every leader should remember that if he takes time to evaluate his life and be honest, it will help him to deal with the moral issues that lead to moral failure, that lead to scandal, that lead to hypocrisy. Oh, there's a dark side of leadership. People get intoxicated with the praise. They can become intoxicated with the applause. They can become intoxicated with all the, the fawning and the sycophants that follow those who are in leader, leadership. Pastors and leaders and business leaders and politicians must be careful about this. Take stock of your life, ladies and gentlemen. And then secondly, remember this. The way to deal with the, the, the issues in our heart, uh, the Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Guard your heart. How do you guard your heart? It talk, it's about your soul, your, your emotions, your will. How do you guard this? You surround yourself with Scripture and hide yourself in, and bask in the light of the Word of the living God. And if you do that, do that, you'll protect your heart. Uh, David said this, and David, when he knew, he was a man who did not guard his heart and fell into sin. But later in life he wrote these precious words in Psalm 119. Where and how shall a young man cleanse his way? Make his way pure and decent and wholesome. How? By taking heed thereto 
according to thy word. Thy word, O Lord, have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against you. David is telling us that the way to protect ourselves from moral failure and moral scandal and from the life of a hypocrite is to take the word of God and hide it in your heart and it will cleanse you and make you clean. Jesus said, now you are made clean through the word, through the word, the Bible that I have spoken unto you. This is the dark side of leadership. It's easy to talk about character. It's easy to talk about integrity. It's an entirely different matter to live it out in your life. If you are a leader of any sort, these are three dangers you need to be aware of. The danger of your moral compass, your moral heart. If you don't deal with it and correct it, it could lead you astray. And if it leads you astray, it might lead you to a life of hypocrisy. And a life of hypocrisy will lead you to the judgment of God. I trust this has been helpful. Be, be people of character, of integrity. Be morally pure. Deal with your inner thoughts, your inner heart. Get victory on these things. And the Lord will bless you in your business, in your family, in your marriage, in your home. Every blessing to you all. I trust this is a great help to you.